Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I am Vin Stone, that is Joe Bryant, and you, hello, I don't hello. know your name, actually, I know a lot of your names, but you're watching <laughs> this live here on Twitch after the fact, possibly listening with your ear holes and podcast format later. How are you doing? Welcome to the middle of the week. We are here. Jill, mm-hmm. I was trying to do a pre-show with Jill, and Jill's like, shut up, Vin, I'm playing with this. <laughs> Steam I'm deck. on my Steam Deck. Yeah. So I finally got mine. Yay. It came on Monday. I'm so happy. <laughs> there it is. And I've been having so much fun uh, uh, playing lots of games on it. And I've just been very impressed with the build quality, how it feels in your hand, and uh, that it doesn't overheat on your lap. It's just very a very well-built unit. And one of the games... Actually, when you get your Steam Deck out there, uh, one of the games you want, you absolutely want to play is Aperture Desk Job. Mm. It actually uh, teaches you the all the controls on the on the Steam Deck, and I'm sure you know you can play it with the Steam controller as well. But it's made specifically for the Steam Deck, and it's it's really wonderful and snarky, just like the original uh, Portal and Portal Two. And it's a, an extension of uh, Portal. So it's, <laughs> I give you a little hint, the, the turrets <laughs> and Aperture Desk Job are actually toilets. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> it's hilarious. You don't even need the Steam Deck for that, but I do recommend it as well because it helps familiarize uh, yourself with Steam Deck controls. I think they yeah. did a good job with that Absolutely. Layout. You can't play yeah. it with a regular keyboard and mouse, but. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the, the toilets are legit. Yeah. Uh, like, okay. I mean, it, it's still got a, there, there's still people at Valve that uh, can drop that type of humor in. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right. That's pretty cool. But, oh, and it's mm-hmm. cool. You find out what happens to Cave Johnson, too. So Spoilers. That, yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> Man. Uh, do you think maybe you're going to like be able to hack the track and be able to get everything? Oh, definitely. So Track Mania. Uh, uh, Stadium 2, which we've been playing on our, our game streams on Tuesdays and Fridays. But I've never Come heard join of in and what watch. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> there we are. Ben already had it queued up and ready. Uh, it, it, it plays on the deck beautifully. It's just, it's because it's an older game, it's hard to enter the password or the URL uh, to go to our server. So, uh, but there are, there's a workaround for that. I know we have one, one of our pa- wonderful patrons, Rohit has already figured it out. So, um, I think I will figure it out. If not, I will ask <laughs> Rohit. <laughs> our it's wonderful- kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. We, we got like five LGC or six family. different attack methods. My, yeah. my champion theory right now is just to install barrier on the deck and use barrier to get the keyboard and mouse and input. Jill's got yeah. a good idea with using the URL because you can put the server password in the URL and just kind of copy that over there. That might yeah. be another thing. Mm-hmm. Fun things to play about. And that's the beautiful thing about a deck. That's what I'm saying. Might not be for everybody just yet because it's still very much a tinker device. You yeah. Know, things that are like, hmm, I'll try this. Maybe I'll try this. And everything's going to work out. But you know what? They have improved the the GUI so much. You know, I'd been fo- we'd all been following the progress of that. And it's just getting better and better. And every day there's updates. And I really like how it curates all the best games that play on the deck that are are in your library already. So right. that's a really nice uh, feature. So I think deck has done. Uh, Valve has done it. Lord Gaben <laughs> has done it. <laughs> it is a, one of the coolest devices that you can have at home. And unfortunately, I wish they could get more out. But the fact that they're being able to deliver as many as they have at the pace that they're doing it. During these times, still pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of Trek Mania, we'll be back on that on Friday. So if you want to hop in, you're welcome to. Uh, it's open to Twitch subscribers and patrons. We've got a dedicated channel in our Discord, our super secret Discord, that you can pop in, ask any questions that you want. It's not necessarily for racing fans. If you're a racing fan, you can probably adapt. You might get a little cranky. But if you like physics, platforming, just happens to have wheels on this. You like solving yes. puzzles. It's got the puzzles. Every track mm-hmm. is its own puzzle. It will make your brain think. And it's a community hangout session for Lanks Gamecast. You got thoughts, hints, allegations, questions. Pop into voice chat while we're live. We'll get them answered. Now, I have not been doing anything as entertaining as playing with my deck. <laughs> yeah. I haven't. 
I've been playing with this guy. This little microphone. Uh, m- mics. Fussy mics. <laughs> Fussy mics, traditionally. And uh, this is a ribbon microphone. And you typically don't see ribbon microphones in uh, podcasting setups or at people's homes. Because, A, most people are like, what's a ribbon mic? Does it have mm-hmm. a ribbon around it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't have a little ribbon on the bottom. <laughs> it's kind of the OG microphone and um, several problems with them. They're affected by, you know, you move them too quick, it can break the ribbon. I've broken mm-hmm. a ribbon by talking into one. Ah, uh, yeah. Very sensitive. <laughs> this has happened. Uh, temperature. They're affected by temperature. They sound different. And impedance which was another challenge with this microphone because i'd play around i had exactly one preamp that could drive it properly and just get that lined up because you get whatever your mic impedance is and you want traditionally like five times that for whatever you're going to be plugging it into and what am i talking about i happen to get this used this is a uh, se electronics i got this for interface and linux now i just want to play around with it in a couple of shows to see if i could tame it a bit too fussy <laughs> for my thoughts, uh, just my use case, because I like my RE27ND because you just plug it in and it works. Um, they're old, you know, this one's supposed to be a lot brighter, but it's still kind of dark. So if you're listening at home, you're like, Bruh. I'm like, yeah, it's, uh, I, I got it processed as much as I could. And self noise with this is only about one dB outside of what I would consider usable as a studio microphone. Mm. It's real close, but these are really cheap. Well, not cheap, cheap, but affordable. They're like two, three hundred bucks. So for a ribbon microphone, use I you could use this on an instrument, um, horns, something like that. Maybe overhead drums. I don't know necessarily. You would want to use this for podcasting, but I am just because I got it plugged in and I really like the shock mount. And uh, I'll probably be back on the RE27 <laughs> next week. But hey, I yeah. had to give it a solid, solid try. Speaking of making things do things they weren't designed for. You got to love the Linux crowd, Joe. Yes. This is absolutely brilliant. Looking Ooh. around and like, do you have an old iPad laying around? You oh, might I be have able to several. Run Linux on it. <laughs> I know people are like, let's shock Jill. You have a lot of a thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, but they have done it. These guys are working on making an iPad useful. Like the iPad air two. And not just iPads, basically anything with the A788 chips on it. Some work has been done with this. You know, they've looked at um, Akashi Linux and like, man, maybe we can make this. And it turns out I was reading through uh, the tweet thread on this. It's like, oh, mm. basically a typo had stopped this development for a long time. Like, oh, we got it up and running. Still early wow. days. You know, you're not going to be able to uh, just, I mean, it, it's enough to play around with, right? Very simple, very basic. Uh, The only things implemented right now is all the RAM, which is 1.5 gigs without device reserve memory, Apple's own interrupt controller. That's compatible with the M1 generic ARM3 GPU. Mm. Although I'm not sure it works. So yeah, we're we're there. It boots. Still exciting because I wouldn't buy an iPad. I don't know why you have so many. Jill loves Apple products. That's why she buys so many iPads. (laughs) Yeah, I have Huge every Apple Apple, <laughs> Apple computer in my uh, vintage computer collection, as well as iPads. And this is wonderful because this can keep the iPad out of the, uh, you know, out of uh, the trash. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can, uh, you know, you can put Linux on it and um, Apple no longer supports the older iPads. So, and this is true for all their computers, you can put Linux on almost every everything Apple. So and and keep them out of the landfill and out of the trash. <laughs> I think for a certain clique of people like us, so uh, you just really enjoy hardware. I enjoy neat hardware. It doesn't matter who made it. That's why I'm looking at things like the M1 and now the M2. Yeah. That was and I was like, I want one of those. Oh, absolutely. Do you, yeah, yeah. Do you plan on running whatever? I know I'm just going to wipe it and put Linux on it and play with the hardware. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, uh, this is this is an interesting proposition because an iPad two is not a slouch. No, not a, not at all. They're still really great machines, and they have nice cameras, and uh, you know, good. Uh, some of the unit, some of the different versions have really good sound systems on them, mm-hmm. and um, it's it's. 
you know, been so nice to be able to, you know, on Android tablets to be able to install Linux. And now we can do it on, on our iPads and our Mac products. So just amazing. Thank you to the developers. That's <laughs> all the exciting. positive aspects. I'm just thinking yeah. about loading them up with Linux and handing them out as gifts. Oh, well, that's a thing. You could literally go on eBay and get them for under, you know, uh, 20, 30 bucks. So old for iPads. Unsuspecting victims. Yeah. <laughs> You could hand them out on Halloween, I guess. <laughs> Buy a bunch of cheap iPads. <laughs> a lot of them on go. eBay. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. Oh, no, no, no. We love Pipewire, Jill Bryant. We love it so much because it's really neat, and it is the future of audio. Yeah, this is awesome. So Ubuntu 22.10 makes Pipewire its default audio server, and we all sigh in relief. Ubuntu 22.10 will ship with Pipewire in place of Pulse Audio and will work out of the box with no workarounds required. This is awesome. And the latest daily builds of the development release include this huge, huge change. And as we know, those of us in the Linux community, Pipewire, Pipewire Audio Server Brings lots of improvements from fewer bugs, better hardware compatibility, reduced CPU usage, and a more modern code base, which will definitely, definitely um, help the Ubuntu community. So, and it, and it's this is just nice to have Ubuntu finally uh, including something that Fedora did back in 2021. So you now expect Ubuntu. Fedora to do it. I mean, yeah, come on. yeah. <laughs> you, think, you think a lot of things when you think about canonical bleeding edge, not one of them, not one of them. Yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> here's the thing. At first, I was like, Pulse Audio, I remember that. We're still using it. Pulse Audio has been mm -hmm. hated on, rightfully so, for a lot of reasons. But you know what? It was better than nothing, which is effectively what we had until it was created. It's got us to this point. Absolutely. And it's still going to be around for a long time to come. Oh, yeah. Until things start tar targeting Pipewire. Remember, Pipewire was created for, you know, video with Wayland and all that. But now it's like, mm -hmm. it's the new future of audio, which it kind of is. So, you know, don't pour one out for Pulse just yet. The only thing I saw um, with, like, Pipewire is I'm seeing a lot of kids, not necessarily kids, new people to Linux, they wanted to start doing recording with their DAWs and their Linux. How do I do this? Easiest way. Canonical. If you're going to ship Pipewire, make sure you ship Wire Plumber as well. Mm. Please do that because that yeah. is the Pipewire patch bay that you're going to see. You know, I use Carla or KT or anything like or that. Jack. Yeah. With Jack. Mm -hmm. So you know, make sure that's there. <laughs> Please do that. But for the end user, it should just work. And that, that is the beauty of Pipewire. So oh, good definitely. News. Good news. Absolutely. But we got to talk about Pulse because so we're not going to pull yeah. one out for it just yet. We're yeah. Not. And Pulse Audio 16 is out. So everyone Yay. get excited. I, <laughs> that didn't sound like excitement. Anyway. Oh, I'm uh, happy. <laughs> you know what? It's there. Uh, the only thing of mild interest. For me is the increased flexibility for the module jack d bus detect because now you can load a sync and source independently that's neat for me average person you know i just funny speak leave it at that never worry about it and um it can be loaded more than once so i can do a bunch of different configs if i'm nice. ever in a ill situation where i have to use the pulse audio module jack which i try to avoid if you're listening to the pre-show or watching live you can see each and every week i'm like Ah, uh, also player. Grr, why do I use also player? Because it's one of the few players that logically supports Jack mm. out. Now, in the future, it's going to be Pipewire with VLC, probably. But I hear you. You're like, but Finn, you can use Jack <laughs> with VLC. Yes. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> Every time it changes songs with Jack and VLC, it generates two new syncs. And uh, that doesn't groove with trying to connect things. So... If you only have two outputs, that's a different story than if you have, you know, 30. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Looking forward to, uh, it's hard to get excited about Pulse Audio, as long as it gets better and not worse. I'm kind of happy oh, about that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I'm using Pulse right now, and, and I have been for years on here on um, LWW. 
and I was using Jack also, and Jack uses Pulse also. So it's been a it's been really stable these last few years, honestly. It's the good yeah. enough option, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, for your desktop audio use on Jill's box right now, we're doing both. Yeah. We're doing both. That is uh, mm-hmm. Pulse Audio with Jack using Pulse Audio module Jack to convert mm-hmm. the Pulse Audio shenanigans over to Jack and get mm-hmm. it over to Jackbox, which then then it's Jack the rest of the way down. So yeah, <laughs> there's your Pulse Audio update. Maintain. <laughs> your excitement level because time, what do you use for backup? I use Deja Dupe. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I actually do use time shift, <laughs> but Deja Dupe too, but I've been using time shift a lot because it's integrated in a lot of, uh, uh, distros like, uh, Guru to Linux, the arch based distro. This, but this again, is, to that point, why do I use Deja? Yeah. Cause it was there. It was that, there. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll use that for backup. <laughs> And it saved me a couple of times. Absolutely, Ben. Um, you yeah. know, like weekly backups. I'm like, oh, le gasp. I've accidentally deleted that one thing. And like, oh, I got a backup. Oh, I don't have a backup of that over here. Oh, no. Oh. I, then I go digging through when I find it. I'm like, yes. Yeah. So speaking of time shift, the creator of the wonderful backup system sna- snapshot software for Linux, time shift, unfortunately, sadly, has to stop working on the project. But the wonderful Linux distribution, Linux Mint, will take over development of the Time Shift, Shift Backup Tool. Yay! So this is this is awesome, and it really makes sense because Time Shift is actually is central to Linux Mint's backup and update strategy. In fact, that's the first distro I've ever used a uh, Time Shift on. And many people like me love that Linux Mint not only includes it out of the box, but in- encourages new users to use it. And it's really awesome because they're making TimeShift an official member of the X app family of software. And the X app, app software is actually Linux's Linux Mint's collection of homegrown software it designs and develops to be distro agnostic for the widest possible use. So that makes sense because so many different distros use TimeShift. And it's it's really nice having uh, Linux Mint, you know, continue the development on that. Way to go, Linux Mint. This is wonderful. As with a lot of things, backups are something that become more and more important the older you get. Yeah. <laughs> you make three backups of everything. I do. It's just a, a motto I live by. <laughs> and I know you're thinking to yourself, why do I need a backup? Everything's in the cloud. Read just do a search for like Google horror stories. Oh yeah. Or Apple horror stories where your login gets scrabbled and you can't get any of your stuff. And uh corporation a or whichever soul is corporation that you've chosen to back up your data goes, eh, not my problem. It says right here in line 17 on page 300 that it's not our problem. You just got to deal with it. Also pay your bill. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> having a local backup is yeah. very important. And I think, unfortunately, you know, Growing up, I'm not going to pretend like, oh, no, I was always great with back. I wasn't at all. Didn't care about them growing Mm. up. And this (laughs) is at a time where you really needed to be back then because your connection to the internet was 24 to 28K on a good day, depending on what the handshake was. And it would take weeks to get your stuff back. But then again, storage wasn't necessarily cheap. You lost something. What was the solution? Uh. Well, (laughs) <laughs> Maybe you got lucky and you bought a like tape backup drive or a zip disk to keep like super critical things on, but yeah. <laughs> it's so easy today and storage is cheap enough today. If we're setting up something like Time Shift or Deja Dupe, as we were talking earlier, probably mm-hmm. already installed. You might not have known about it. Do something, at least for your home folder, and yeah. have that there. Just do it. You yeah, don't need it until you do it. And that one yeah. time you need it. Like it's done. it's there absolutely you know and if you bork your system or I- install something malicious there you go you, you can fix it by just going and going back and to the one of the snapshots and you're done and your system's back up again and right and all your files are there woohoo <laughs> and even if it's just that one file that one config yeah. file for that one thing <laughs> or that one jpeg that was really funny and you wanted to post it again might be talking about a true story from less than two weeks ago. I'm like, man, mm. I can't believe I did. I wanted to post that. Um, use it. So it's yeah. good that they're keeping this alive. 
Personally, <laughs> I've never played around with Time Shift, but I've heard a lot of good things from a lot of people, enough to trust it, and good on the Mint Project. Yeah, very for doing nice. This. I mean, mm-hmm. stepping in and picking that up. Now, mm-hmm. biometrics. What's a yeah, biometric? This is, this is interesting. <laughs> biometrics is like if you've ever been at particular facilities that you got to get in, in and out of, you got to do your hand scan and you get put it between them. Don't do that. They get onto you, even though, you know, you think you're original, like that's been done a million times. I'm like, fine, I can put it in and do. But to measure your body for security reasons, you know, and that's a typical one, thumbprints, whatever. You might have that on your laptop, you know, thumb scan. Mm-hmm. Another common thing is, you know, face ID. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of things have that, especially like, what was it? Microsoft's Hello? Where you just oh, yeah, yeah. They use that, yeah. <laughs> right. You could like wave a picture of a ham in front of it. It was like, yeah, that's you. Sure. Whatever. Uh, kind of been difficult to cheat, especially in like real time until now. Until now. <laughs> Virtual camera injections. So yeah, watch the following demo video for a better understanding of the control options. There's Tom Cruise. There's, I don't know who that is. Yeah, uh, I don't know who that is. There's somebody I don't know. Einstein. I know Einstein, that. we know. <laughs> yeah. I, all right, Arnold. Yeah, well, there's Arnold. Yeah. All right, and we're back Arnold. to Tom Cruise. So let me go back to the top of this article. Here we go. Deep fake <laughs> offensive toolkit. To give it a little bit of a read, real time controllable deep fakes, ready for virtual camera injection, uh, created. For performing penetration testing against identity verification and video conferencing systems for the use by security analysis, uh, red team members and biometric researchers. Uh, yeah, this has been tested and you know what? It proved very effective, but not in a good way for the other side. Mm-hmm. Basically it's real time deep fakes <laughs> for any virtual device. It works on Linux. If you want to play around with it, cause I know me, I'm going to be like, okay, I want to do that. What do I want to deep fake as i don't know let's see here's a can of compressed air can you do anything you know, i want to make some horror escape like we were doing in our discord last night when we were doing like the mini ai thing did you see that joe yeah i did <laughs> there were uh tons and tons of posts i oh i might might have been responsible for starting it because i just typed yeah. chair into it then we just went down All the right. rabbit hole i'm talking about dolly mini uh huh. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I have a Turing test, a litmus test of these things. You know, which is a tattoo of Bowser wearing shades, playing double neck guitar, riding a surfboard in front of a giant weed sign, with a uh. happy birthday Chris in cursive <laughs> behind him, and with a yeah that and it it tried, but it mm. wasn't hundred percent on it. This this is kind of like that suggestion stick in the sense that. It's using roughly the same technology, but a lot smarter. I know that's oversimplifying things. Jill, what do you want to use in your deepfake offensive toolkit application? Oh, who, who do you want to merge with? Who did I want to merge with? Probably Captain Kirk. Kirk? <laughs> William Shatner. <laughs> oh, man. If we're only limited to Star Trek, who do I, yeah. I want to be? Okay. I want to be the Defiant. Ah, oh, there you go. There you go. I want to be a Gorn or a oh, Mugatu. <laughs> I definitely want to play around with this. Uh, of course, uh, GPU support it needs the CUDA bits. So do yeah. keep that in mind. A link to this will be in our show notes with everything else. It looks fairly simple to set up. Yeah, and it did actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for and us, go ahead. Well, you know, this actually, I was going to say, this actually really makes sense because every, our usage of WebRTC and web based video protocols has increased so much, especially since the pandemic and people working at home. And this can be a real serious problem for security. And many people are actually using video avatars for their video streams already and using this form of video calling technology is honestly a criminal's next step. And I think this DOT application can really actually help us make aware of how this technology can be abused and help us to come up with solutions to prevent it. Absolutely. It, it is very important, you know, that we figure out what all the loopholes are for a criminal getting our identity. So very good. Basically at the end of the day, if you get a video from your <laughs> boss telling you to send a money transfer, it's 100% legit. Just do it. Don't ask any questions. One thing I'm kind of worried about, is where this leads because this leads to 
hardware, webcams, digitally signing video, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and some type of web standard to it's going to become an arms race. It's not going to really stop anything. It's going to make it more difficult. No, there it is. But for us, hey, it's something we can go play with. Yeah. Yeah. We got to talk about an orange pie. It's not a red pie. It's an orange pie. But before we do that, I want to thank everybody supporting us over at LinuxGameCast.com, smashing that Patreon button, getting access to a bunch of cool things like the long, super uncut version of this show in video and podcast form. It's so big. Access to the super secret Discord. That we got laying around. That's where we're at the other six days of the week. Actually in there talking with you. Yeah. <laughs> because it's our Slack. It's a, how we communicate as a organization. What else do we have? Early access to anything that I'm working on, interfacing Linux and things like that, because I like to solicit feedback from the people supporting the show. A couple other things. If you've got a level, if you've got four quarters a week, kick it our way. Come yeah. say hi. Come play Trackmania mm-hmm. with us if you want. Yeah. That's the, the more the merrier. It's the so much fun. The more the merrier. Yeah. And <laughs> it's a brilliant thing. Everyone just popping into Discord like, hello. I'm like, oh, hi, fresh beat. And everyone just becomes fast friends, which is fun to see. Also, mm-hmm. stored at LinuxGameCast.com, we have merch. We have apparel that will anger and confuse the people of your life. Like, what is this? Why are you wearing a penguin on your shirt that says, you as me? And you can just laugh at <laughs> <to> yourself. <laughs> possibly cry in a corner i don't know however yeah. it feels right man however it feels right but thank you for our support all the support that you've been throwing our way helping us do this over the years keeping us loud live independent and uh free of mattress ads do they still do mattress ads i haven't seen a mattress yeah ad in a while. i haven't seen one in a while but they're yeah there there are still a few podcasts <laughs> i've noticed that are still doing those <laughs> i promise you as long as possible we will not be doing sponsored reads <laughs> we've been doing yeah. it so far man all right yeah <laughs> now Ooh, lemon meringue pie. That's one of my favorite kind of pies in the world, Vin. <laughs> That's an orange pie. Oh, it is. Oh, now I see the oranges. Well, I love orange pie, too. I've had that. <laughs> I don't know. I've had lemon, orange, and lime, and I like it. Now, now I'm giving it thorough inspection. That's a small orange. What are the little small oranges called? Tangerines. Uh, tangerines. And I love tangerines even more than oranges. So <laughs> this will be yummy I'm pie. I'm 100% with Candolf. Where's the mustard? Completely unedible without mustard. Uh, no, 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 not with orange. Well, <gasps> actually, some, yeah, uh, actually, orange and mustard can work. I've seen it on hamburgers. <laughs> All of this has led up to talking about the Orange Pie 800. Unlike yeah. the 400, yeah, you're looking at it. That looks awfully familiar, Jill, right? Yeah. Because it is very familiar. It's a little bit different, though. In ways that count, it does support the Rockchip RK3399, six cores, four gigs of low-power DDR. And that chip's been around for about six years, so it's not necessarily the greatest by any stretch of the imagination. It does support 4K60 output, which is nice. Your choice of Chromium, Orange Pie OS, yet to be determined on that. I went looking around because Orange Pie, they have not released pricing or availability yet. But, you know, I can go to the website. Here's all the specs. Again, this will be in the show notes. It looks like Jill's Raspberry, what, the 400? Yeah. But it's the 400. Yeah. Here. But instead of raspberry color, it's orange. Oh, let me see the back of that again. (laughs) Yeah. So here are the ports. This, the Orange Pie 400 has a VGA port. It sure does. And honestly, I was... I was happy to see that because a lot of uh, schools often have older monitors and older hardware. So that makes sense for, especially for schools or company businesses with old monitors. And what's nice is the Orange Pi also has an onboard speaker. It has a headphone jack and Mm -hmm. a full-sized HDMI port, unlike the Raspberry Pi 400. (laughs) So we've, we've got two mini um, HDMI ports on the Raspberry Pi 400, which are, are, are very nice. And yeah, you can ask me then. Yeah. 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 yeah, It works now. Yeah. You might be asking, Mm -hmm. okay, this might be interesting, you know, slightly older processor, but you know, the VGA, like maybe I can make, uh, you know, some retro gaming things or like some small text-based things, or if I need to buy, how much is it to which I'll whisper back. Yeah. We don't know. Don't know. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a link on their site orangepie.org uh that are just grayed out for the aliexpress store which is thing but also on amazon there's a link to each of those but you can't access them where does yeah. this get interesting that's where i want to ask because 
you know, uh, what does the 400, the official, the legit one run like 70 bucks US, I think somewhere in there. Yeah. It's 60 and then a hundred with the whole kit. hundred with the whole kit. Yeah. Yeah. With the mouse and everything. So I'm thinking Uh, for the, I mean, let's call it what it is. I mean, it's the long, true tradition of knockoff Raspberry Pi things, things that are not Raspberry Pi, but will really look like Raspberry Pi. And um, I'm thinking, what is the price point for this? That you go, hmm, what if this is, because if this is 70 bucks, like forget it, I'm just going to get a 400. Uh, Yeah. If this is 35 Mm -hmm. bucks. Yeah, 30 I'd say I'd say forty, forty or fifty, maybe for me. I think fifty would be my cutoff point because if fifty is too yeah. close to seventy, I'm like, you know what? Because if I spend <laughs> that, if I spend that seventy, do you know what comes with that seventy dollars? Support. Yeah. A company that I can be like, hey, Raspberry Pi, this thing we know no yeah. longer works. And they're like, you know what? Here's another one. Not like, uh, hey, this doesn't work. And they're like, yeah, it was only forty bucks. That's why I wanted to be like thirty five dollars. I'm like, well, now it doesn't work. I'm only at thirty five dollars. Not like, Arr. yeah, no, I under, understand. It's, you know, I, I, I honestly think this is really wonderful for Raspberry Pi to have a competitor in the uh, keyboard microcomputer space, be- because it's just going to make Raspberry Pi the next version of this even be better. So that's really see. great, and it's just nice to have another competitor. And um, or- Orange Pi is a. Uh, I, I have an orange pie and they're very nice units and I think they're probably going to be increasing their customer service <laughs> with this new system. <laughs> may or may not. Again, yeah. this is for me, this is having that rock chip, uh, 3399 associated. Yeah. Mm, that's no, that's old kit. Give me something okay. new. Give no, me something new. newer. Yeah. I'd much and rather as- have the modern, ish quad core then again i'm sitting here waiting on raspberry pi i'm like come on the raspberry pi 4 400 is like this close to being able to replace my 10 year old um three boxes that i have down here for web rtc that jill's on yeah mm-hmm. like it, it j- mm. if i was doing <laughs> 720p video i could do it but i can't do 1080p 60 on a man so yeah well yeah, katana give me like that. Yeah, Katana said something in in our chat right now that the 400 has has the 40 pin GPIO and the 800 only has a 26 pin uh, GPIO. You mean so the thing that's on there that we pretend we're going to use but never do? Yeah, <laughs> I have used it. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've had thoughts yeah. and dreams and aspirations <laughs> like I'm going to no, I'm not. Just put the cover back on that thing, Vin. <laughs> so, but it is there. Yeah, there's something very interesting. I just noticed Vin as I was. Uh, holding this up and looking at their Orange Pie website mm-hmm. is the keyboard. It's exactly the same thing, uh, same layout and everything. It's um, they're obviously using the same company for the top shell. Oh, I, it. I didn't notice probably. that until now. <laughs> everything is in the same place, yeah. and instead of the Raspberry Pi logo, there's the orange logo. But it's yeah, yeah. same vendor, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Just notice oh. that. <laughs> you know what? We, we can just get some spray paint and make one. Yeah, we could. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. We got to get out of here. Uh, we did get some feedback on some things, but I didn't have a chance to include it. But uh, if you do have some questions, thoughts, hints, allegations, drop us an email at linuxcenecast.com. Smash that contact button. Leave a comment on this video, be it on Odyssey or YouTube or whereabouts or the Patreon post. We'll definitely get back to you there or just say something mm-hmm. like hey what's going on in our discord but we got to roll out of here i want to thank yes. everybody for showing up but Yay. speaking of thinking people <laughs> let's do that with some episode. credits yeah we have so many wonderful patrons and a lot of this, them are watching us right now i don't know maybe they're listening <laughs> or listening yes <laughs> this is true we got our Theron. He's in chat right now. Our, Don't forget Omegas. One of our advisors. And our, yes. <laughs> Omegas. And our executive producers went by too quickly and I couldn't read it. We get abstractions <laughs> for Chicago land. <laughs> sea monsters like Strider. He's talking. Yeah, he him. is. Our very own Matthew Commandon, creator of Lutris. <laughs> we got our Death Notes. 
We've got our chairlings. There's so many people on this list, we can't even go through them all anymore at the end of the show. Oh, I can pause it for you if you want to go through each and every one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the only way that would happen because it goes by too quick for me to see them. <laughs> Thanks for watching us, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Love you all. <laughs> Bye-bye.